Let's talk about what equity is in a margin account and how we can approach questions that ask us how to calculate equity, especially if it's a combined equity type question. Now, first thing to establish is that a margin account involves what we call leverage. If an investor is using leverage in their margin account, it means they have borrowed money, invested that borrowed money, which amplifies both their gain potential and their loss potential. Putting borrowed money on the line is always a risky endeavor. And whether you're doing it with a margin account or borrowing money from a friend and taking that borrowed money and going to a casino with that borrowed money, either way, if you end up losing borrowed money, you're not only losing whatever you put into the mix, but you also lost the money that was part of the loan from the party that lent you that money. So if things go bad, you're losing money kind of from two different angles, which is why we would generally only recommend margin accounts to aggressive, sophisticated investors who know what they're doing. If you're not careful with these accounts, you can really lose a lot of money quickly. The term equity oftentimes is related to ownership. So if I say, what is my equity in a margin account? What we're really asking is, what do I own in that margin account? Let's go ahead and put one of the two equity formulas in front of us. We'll start first with the long margin equity formula. A person can determine their equity in a long account by taking first their long market value, a lot of times we just call that LMV. That is just the value of all the stocks and securities in the portfolio. We then subtract the debit balance of the account. The debit balance represents what the investor borrowed from the broker dealer. So it's basically money that they owe and will have to pay at some point in time in the future. Once we subtract those two numbers, LMV minus the debit, we have an investor's equity. So for example, if an investor has a $100,000 market value of securities in their account, but they borrowed $30,000, from their broker dealer, that'd be their debit balance, their equity would be $70,000. That should make sense if you think about it. If you have a $100,000 account, but you owe $30,000 back to the firm that holds that account for you, you really only own $70,000 of that account. You can even calculate what we would consider the equity level in a customer's account by taking the equity and dividing it by the long market value. In this example here, if the investor has a $70,000 equity level and a $100,000 LMV, that means that they have a 70% equity level. Regulation T requires investors to initially establish a position with at least a 50% equity level, and this account is well above that mark. They own 70% of the account. The other equity formula is a bit more tricky because we're dealing with a short stock position. The formula is credit minus short market value, we just say SMV typically, is equal to equity. Let's first focus on SMV. Short market value just means, hey, this is how much the investor has sold short in their account. Let's say, for example, the investor sold short $50,000 of stock. There are a couple of concepts we need to lay out first to really understand what credit is. When an investor sells short stock, they are borrowing that stock from their broker dealer and selling it on the market. And when they sell those borrowed shares, there's cash coming into their account. That is one part of the credit balance. The other part of the credit balance is what the investor deposits when they're establishing their short stock position. Shorting stock always has to take place in a margin account, and at a bare minimum, when a new position is established, Regulation T requires a deposit of 50%. The credit balance is just cash sitting on the sideline waiting to be used to buy back that short stock position. So let's say in this example, the investor credit balance is 75,000. That leaves the investor with $25,000 of equity. If an investor established a short stock position for 50,000 and deposited exactly the regulation T 50% requirement, this is what the initial equity formula would look like. When they sell those borrowed shares, they collect $50,000 of cash from that transaction. And on top of that, they deposit half of that being 25,000 into their account as a form of basically collateral showing that they can buy buy back the stock at a later point, and that $50,000 short sale combined with the $25,000 initial deposit gives us a credit balance of $75,000. You can also determine the equity level in a customer's short margin account by taking the equity and dividing it by the short market value. $25,000 divided by $50,000 is 50%, and we are right at a 50% equity level in this account. Now, if we get rid of the numbers we have on the screen, that leaves us just with the two equity formulas. LMV minus debit is equal to equity and credit minus short market value is equal to equity. It's possible 
you get a test question that asks you what the formula for equity is, either in a long account or a short account, or maybe even in a combined brokerage account where we have both long and short positions. If a combined equity question comes up on the exam, all you need to do is put these two formulas together. The simple way to do it is just keep the pluses positive and keep the minuses negative. One way that we could state it is LMV minus debit plus credit minus SMV is equal to equity. And just be mindful that we can shift all those variables around. And as long as the pluses are in the right place and the minuses are in the right place, then we still have a right answer. So for example, negative SMV plus credit plus LMV minus debit is also a valid answer for the combined equity formula. Now, with all that being said, let's go ahead and put a practice question up on the board to see if we understand this topic. All right, there it is. A margin account owned by a customer of a brokered firm reflects the following balances. We have an LMV of 50,000, an SMV of 40,000, a credit balance of 60,000, and a debit of 20,000. And the question is, what is the customer's combined equity? If you want to, take a moment, pause the video and see if you can answer this on your own. All right. Do you think you have the answer? Let's look at it together. As we were talking about before we got to this question, we just need to put all these numbers together and make sure we keep the positive numbers positive and the negative numbers negative. And to do that, let's go ahead and just put the two separate equity formulas up on the screen. LMV minus debit is equal to equity and credit minus SMV is equal to equity. Now let's go ahead and combine this together as one big formula. And it really doesn't matter what order we keep it in, but I'll go ahead and state it as LMV minus debit plus credit minus SMV is equal to equity. And we'll just put the corresponding numbers below. 50,000 minus 20,000 plus 60,000 minus 40,000. After all those numbers are added and subtracted, put together, that will leave us with a $50,000 equity in this account. Hi, I'm Brandon. If you enjoyed this video, then you'll love the courses I authored with Achievable. Now offering courses on all major FINRA and NASAA exams, I wrote these courses exclusively for Achievable, and they include tons of real world examples, more videos just like these on dozens of key topics, a built-in study planner, hundreds of chapter review questions, and unlimited practice exams. Our courses are competitively priced, and you can try them out for free first to see if our style is the right fit for you. Follow the links below in the description to get started.